Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of building our events countdown app using MVVM architecture. And in part one, we were looking at our navigation and how to do this with a coordinator pattern. And in this part, we're going to look at our model and how to persist data across different launches of our app using core data. Just before we start, as a quick note on the folder structure and the groups that I've added on the left here. So you can see I have an extensions group, a controllers group, and a coordinators group. And I've just dragged my relevant files into their folders. So you can do the same. It makes things tidier. Um, so yeah, it's up to you. And let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create a model. And we're going to come over to the left here, create a new file. And we're going to scroll down to this core data section and click on data model. And we're going to call it the same name as our app. So I will call this events app. Create that. And you're presented with your core data model. And the first thing we need to do here is click on this add entity button. And once you click on that, you can see that an entity appears here. And we want to rename this event. And if we go back to our design briefly, we can see that we have three properties that we need. We need the name of our event. We need the date that the event will occur on. And this will enable us to get the time remaining until the event. And we need an image. So let's go ahead and add that to our model. So the first attribute we'll add by clicking on this plus is the name, and this will be of type string. We're then going to add our date. That will be of type date. And the third one will be our image, which will be of type binary data. And if you come over to the right here, what we want to do is firstly, tick this uh, store, sorry, allows external storage here, and remove this optional type. For date, we want to remove the optional type. And for name, we want to remove the optional because these are all required properties that we want when we save our event. So save that. And what this will do, once you've cleaned and built, it will automatically produce an event object of type NS managed object and this will allow us to interact with core data and we don't have to create our own event uh, type because uh, the system has done it all for us so we can go ahead and use that straight away so let's write a class that will allow us to save an event and also fetch a list of events that we need for our first screen so if you come over to the left and create a new file, and we're going to create a Swift file called core data manager, create that and type final class core data manager. And the way that core data works is we need to create something called a persistent container. And this will allow us access to be able to save things, fetch things, delete things, that kind of thing. And that's all you need to do the setup. So in order to do this, we're going to type lazy, which will mean that we won't actually create this uh, instance until we access it. For and just type persistent container. And one thing we need to do is import core data at the top here. And then we're going to say it's going to be of type NS persistent container equals open your curly brackets and let's create an instance of our persistent container at the top here. And we need to give it the name of our model. So in my case, that would be events app. We then need to load our persistent stores and we don't need to worry about the description and maybe you want to print out the error if 
there is one. And can't quite see it at the moment, but let's carry on and return this persistent container and then execute this method. And then we're going to print out the error. So that gives us our persistent container, which is great. And for our methods, we need to access the managed object context, which is what we call our save and fetch one. So to do that, I'm going to create a computer property called MOC, managed object context, which is going to return us an MS managed object context. And this is going to be our persistent container dot view context, which is the main context. And as of Swift five point something, we don't need to add a return statement here. It's implicit. So this is the context that we'll be using. Now in later parts, I'll discuss when we would want to use a background context, and that can be useful for long running tasks or heavier um, uh, interactions with core data. So let's write our save function now. So we're gonna call this save event. And this will take our name our date and our image. Now it's important to recognize that we are only doing this to test our save and our fetch. We will abstract this out and probably just have a save function that will save our context in a future part. So let's import UI kit for now so that it can recognize this UI image type. And what we'll do here is we'll create an event. So as I said, we'll probably not do this here, but this is just to show you how our fetch and save are gonna work. So event set value, um, and the first one will be our name for the key name. And then it will be our image data which we need to convert from our image into a JPEG data. And the compression quality is from zero to one, so we're gonna give it a one. That's the uh, best quality you can have. And that's going to be a set value image for image, sorry, image data for image. Because if you remember, it's that binary data type. And our final one will be just the date for key date. And then we're going to go ahead and use our manage object context that we defined here to save this. So we're going to say try moc.save and that will be catching any error and again we're going to print this out for now, but in a future part, we'll actually handle this and show something on the UI if we get errors here. And then we're going to have our fetch events, which will give us back an array of these events. And you can see that we haven't even defined this type. But as I said earlier, these are auto generated. And we're going to do a similar thing here. We're going to say do and then let events equal try moc dot fetch. And then we need to define our fetch request here. And this will be nx fetch request of type event. And the name, entity name will be event. And we pass it into our fetch function. And then we can return our events here. And let's just handle the error scenario. So again, we'll print the error out and we'll return an empty array for now. And that gives us what we need for our fetch. So we've now got a save and our fetch events. So let's see if this is working. 
So if we come back up to our event list view controller, we're going to import core data and we're going to define an instance of our core data manager. And if you're wondering why I'm defining this directly in the view controller, this is not how it's going to work. This is just to test our save and fetch. So let's do our save. So type core data manager dot save event. Let's do new years. Uh, the date, let's just do right now to make it easy. And uh, we don't have an image at the moment, but I have downloaded one from Unsplash. I just typed in new years here and downloaded one of these. So I'm going to drag my new year.jpg into my Xcode project under assets. Let's just drag that into assets. And there it is. And we can then use that in our this view controller by typing image literal and then it's the only one there and then we can do the fetch events and let's print out the result of that call so if we run this now we're expecting to see our event saved and then fetched and here in our console we can see that we have our date we have the image that's been saved and we have the name of the event so that's what we were looking for. Everything seems to be working. So let's come and delete this code because we're not going to be using it here. Delete our core data manager and the import statement. So we didn't quite get to adding an event via the UI or listing them, but we'll be looking to work towards this over the next few parts of this course. And we'll also be looking at introducing our view models and how the end-to-end -end flow will work between our screen and our core data manager, which will make more generic to handle any type of entity if you want to add to this app in the future. And we'll be creating our events to be saved at a higher level up um, to show you how you can achieve this.